Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. There is no other place we would rather be than to be in His presence. Amen. Amen. We're going to make the way for offering. Hallelujah. Multiplied unto you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, the entrance of God's word brings light Amen. and revelation. Hallelujah. We cannot make it in life if we do not read the word. We cannot make it in life if we do not get a revelation. Hallelujah. That is why church is the best place to be. In church, you hear things that you will not get out there. Hallelujah. When you read the word, you get that revelation and you know exactly what you must do. Hallelujah. You no longer stumble. You walk in the light because you're reading the word of God. Praise the Lord. Mm, I have titled the message today, The Love of God. Amen. John 3 verse 16, we all know, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. You are loved by God. Amen. God's love is not empty or just words. It is full of action. Hallelujah. David expresses the nature of God's love in Psalms 103, the bless my soul Psalms. Hallelujah. Where he mentions the benefits we receive from our Father. Namely, He forgives all our sins. Amen. He heals all our diseases, not some. All our diseases are healed. He redeems our lives from the pit. It doesn't matter what pit it can be, but He is there to redeem us. Amen. He crowns us with love and compassion. He satisfies our desires with good things. And our youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's no old age, hey? They are not getting older. Yes, you are rejuvenating. The word of God will rejuvenate you. Hallelujah. Amen. These are just some of the benefits. Amen. Hallelujah. When we give or we bring our offering, we are loving on God and blessing Him. Amen. We thank God for giving us the platform of giving or sowing a seed, which is one of the many kingdom principles. Through this platform, we are able to shift seasons and create new ones. Hallelujah. Through giving, you are able to shift what you don't want to see in your life. Hallelujah. You should sow a seed and you are able to create a new season. Amen. You remember the widow had to present that seed of oil. And what happened? The oil multiplied and multiplied. And the season was shifted in her life. Praise the Lord. So your seed will either remove what you do not want in your life or it will also place what you want to see in your life. So if you have a need, you put a seed in the ground. Hallelujah. That is giving. That is why we have to name our seed. Pastor always says that, name your seed. We place a seed in the ground, it rots, it dies, and brings out something new. Hallelujah. It's a mystery. Through our seed, we reap harvest over and above the seed we have placed in the ground. Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above what we can ask and imagine. Amen. When we need a financial blessing, for instance, in our lives, sowing a seed is the only platform available to us. Praying about our finances, I'm not saying prayer is not powerful, prayer is very powerful. But when we need a financial breakthrough, what we need to do is to sow a seed. Hallelujah. That seed will change our financial situation. We have to sow a seed. 
The word of God in Genesis 8 verse 22 says, As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. So we ought to sow. We are sowing. Just like the seasons are changing, we also have to sow in our lives. Amen. We have to sow with understanding. Sowing is one powerful platform God has given to us to ward off the arrows that fly by day and the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. Amen. So if there is no seed, it means you are placing your life in danger. The seed is powerful. Hallelujah. We are loved by, by God. What a privilege. What an honor. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the evening time this morning. Thank you that our seed speaks for us. Thank you that the seed is vital. We place a seed in the ground. Lord, it is you who multiplies. The seed we put in the ground could be a small seed. But Lord, the harvest is mighty. The harvest is very big. You are a, a giving God. You are a loving God. Bless your people this morning as they give in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah.
which is your mother in the house. Even for our future daughters that will be mothers today, for one day, we thank God for them and we pray that they will learn from our mistakes because we're not perfect. But we thank God that we serve a perfect God. Hallelujah. We too as mothers, we learn it every day. It's a, your, sometimes your child will teach you something. It's amazing. Listen to them. Because we're never perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I thank the Lord for this wonderful morning. And um, I want to welcome some, I see some new faces here this morning. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to the house of the Lord. Can we bow our heads in, the, in prayer this morning and close our eyes? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful morning, Lord. Without you, Jesus, this day would never have been possible. So I thank you, Lord, for our breath, O oh God. Lord Jesus, there are many, O oh God, people in this world, even in this time of pandemic, Lord. We hear of others, Lord Jesus, not that because they were sick or ill, but suddenly, Lord, they, they were overtaken by this virus, O oh God. And I pray, Father, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we as children of God, Father, we have confidence in you, God. That, Lord, you have protected us and God will surely protect us. Amen. If we walk with you, God, and we serve you, oh, Lord Jesus, we can never be afraid, oh, God. Because we have a great confidence in a great God, in the midst of a virus, oh, Father, that may pass our way. But when it sees the child of God, he trembles and moves the other way. That's what I believe this morning. And I thank God for his love and mercy. I pray for others that have lost uh, loved ones. I pray that God console their hearts. I pray that they will draw closer to God in this time. And not take ever, ever a moment for granted. Because we need the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be covered. We need a covering all the time. We cannot deny that we may have a job, we may have a, a good life when we're young. We may think that we are invincible, but we are not this morning. We truly, truly need the Lord Jesus Christ in, our, in this day and age. We need Jesus all the time. Young people, we need Jesus. We need Jesus more than ever before. If there's anything I could say this morning, and it's one thing I could say, is serve the Lord with all your heart with all your mind and all your soul. And you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. This morning, Holy Spirit, you do the word. You preach the word this morning because it's only God that can do the best and the best is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord and the Lord. So, like I said this morning, we are all striving for true perfection and holiness. We have never come. In the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 12, it says, Not that I have attained or am already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold, for which Christ has already uh, laid a hold for me. So every day we're learning, brothers and sisters, I'm learning from you. I need to be corrected and I should take correction. Hallelujah. So if you have to come to me and say, uh, give me an... Um, you know, some correction, I should take it home here. That's life. Life is about never being perfect because only God is perfect. Hallelujah. And when we can do that, when we can have a heart of forgiveness and a heart that is so, that is striving for perfection, that heart can receive seed from God. So when you pray for and you sick, you're healed because healing can just come to you. It gravitates towards you. When you need something from God, sometimes you may have never prayed for you for it and it will come to you. I am telling you, brothers and sisters, from experience. But I'm not going to talk about that now. Because this morning, I'd like to... Um, I have a small word from God this morning. So where do I start? Okay, we, I would like to read from uh, Proverbs 31, which everyone knows, uh, I'm sure. But it's just nice because the Word of God is fresh every day. Hallelujah. Proverbs 31.
a lot. If there's one word God gave me, and it was gratitude, hallelujah. And it comes too close to my heart, even when I say it, it comes from deep within my soul. Because, brothers and sisters, we got something to be thankful for this morning, hallelujah. We thank God for the food that we eat. We thank God for the clothes we wear. We thank God for the life He's given to us. I thank God for each and every one of you here today. You're so special, do you know? God knows you by your name. And God knows every minute detail about you. Imagine there's so many uh, pebbles on the seashore. Just like that, there's so many people in this world. But God knows each and every one of us. So you're special today, hallelujah. Amen. If you ever thought, I've been written off so many times. Many times I went for jobs and the door closed on me. Many times I looked for a partner, I couldn't find one. Many times, I can go on with it, this is just examples. Many times I prayed for something, maybe you thought you never got the answer. But the, I, but the whole thing is to press on, don't give up. Because you serve Almighty God and He knows which is the best time to answer us. And His time is perfect. So sometimes you may be thinking, why have you been kept away? You will one day know why you were kept away from, a, from, a, from something that you needed. Hallelujah. So I'm just saying gratitude. And I thank God this morning for my family. I thank God for pastor. I thank God for my parents. I thank God for you. I thank God that we have an opportunity to come to church this morning. Hallelujah. That we could worship the Lord. That we got out of bed today. And you may have thought, no, maybe, uh, you know, I'm sitting at home today, it's Sunday, so I need to rest because of Monday. And that's going to become a pattern because you're never going to have a rest for life if you do not put your rest in Jesus. Your bed can't give you rest, but Jesus can give you eternal peace. Hallelujah. So you can be too. Amen. Yes, we can clap to that because you may be thinking, I need to rest the physical. You do not need to rest your physical body because when your spirit takes over the physical, you don't need to rest the, the, the physical body. It's, it's gone upside down. It's, it's wrong. You need to come to Jesus and when your spirit and his spirit combine with your spirit, you always energetic, irrespective of your age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's just that it's gone so wrong. People think, no, why should I? I only got a few hours left before Monday morning. I'm stressing about job. I'm stressing about, I mean, it will always be a stress. In fact, the stress is about to get higher because you don't put Jesus first. Something went wrong in your life. You put out the, the source of your life. God is the source. You can lose that job tomorrow. So why do we put things, but, but when it comes to getting up Monday morning, you very early up. No, I'm not picking on anybody today, I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about, you know, sometimes we're lazy. Yeah. But be the mother in the house and get up first. Always, every Sunday, up first. Because I don't want, you know, then I know I can at least prod the other. A pastor is up first, sorry to say, it's actually sometimes it's all <laughs> and buy 
quietly, quietly, with the fruit of her hand, she plucked a, a vineyard. Sorry, this is the King James Version. She girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceived that her merchandise is good and her cattle brought up not by night. She doesn't worry. She never worries. From a little, this is a secret. I learned from another lady who is 118 years old right now. She's still alive. And, I, and you know, you must sit with the old people and ask them, tell me something. Learn from them. She told me the secret is not to worry. And I had worry in my life. And I started to make a conscious decision not to worry. So what I do when something like that does happen, which happens, I go and pray. I don't care what time of the night it is. I don't care, I don't want to make, if I think I'm going to disturb other people, drape yourself over and pray. And you go back and you sleep. You let the worry at Jesus' feet, hallelujah. Because what can you do to change certain things? Can you add to the, to the number of hairs on your head? We cannot. It's God that gives us, you know, She girded her loins straight and set in her arms. She perceived that her merchandise is good and her candle goes out not by night. She laid her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretched out her hands to the poor, yea, she reached out forth her hands to the needy. There's a blessing in that. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Clothed with scarlet. So you may be wondering, what is that? How does that come today in this world, in this time in 2021? It's covering your home with prayer. Your mother covers her home with the blood of Jesus with prayer. And you, do, you have a peaceful sleep. You have a peaceful sleep. When your children are screaming that something has entered the house, maybe a, a, a huge spider, you don't scream as a mother. You walk there and you knock it down. Because you have a power. God has given you such a power. Hallelujah. She's not afraid. Um, she makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. And even God takes care of her. Her husband is known in the gates where he sits among the elders in the land. Even the husband is well known. He's a man of God because you pray for him. Hallelujah. You don't sit at home and send him to church or the other way around and you, uh, the husband, sit at home. There's a blessing in going together in marriage, hallelujah. Amen. We need to come to church. I maybe there's an excuse of a valid reason that's, that's acceptable. But most of the time, try to go together to church. Just like you go together to town. Just like you go together for your child's graduation. Go as a family. Your children learn from that. They will become good fathers. They will become good mothers, hallelujah. Uh, uh, she makes it fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles unto the merchant. She works hard. Strengthen on her, her, her clothing and she shall rejoice in times to come. She opened her mouth for wisdom and in her tongue is a law of kindness. She looked well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. No time for idleness in this time of life. There's no time to sit and talk about uh, another woman, another man. Don't do that, refrain from that. Rather say, let's pray for somebody. Or cut the conversation and say, I don't do that. Hallelujah. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Hallelujah. Amen. What, is, what does a virtuous woman mean? A virtuous woman as a one, is the one that, um, who leads a home with integrity, discipline and more. All the virtues she is practicing are aimed towards making the life of her husband better. teaching her children and serving the Lord. When a man is looking for a wife, he wants his, his wife to be an asset to his life, not a liability. And the Proverbs 31 woman gives us great examples how we can bring value to our relationship. 
Firstly, she teaches um, that it is important for the family to trust her and rely on her. Hallelujah. She doesn't disappear from the house. They know that you can make a house into a home where everyone is loved and prayed for. Not played for, I said prayed for. A virtuous woman is full of gratitude for everything. Hallelujah. It's that woman that had a little flower, but she gave it. Hallelujah. Just learn that a little bit is better than having nothing. Because God is the one that increases for you. Hallelujah. So be thankful and merciful. Never to compare ourselves to anyone else. For we only have the same two feet that God gave you. is the feet that will carry you on. So just remember you are uniquely made. Hallelujah. That's when you appreciate yourself. And you, and you, can, and you can never be defeated. God sustains you. Hallelujah. Understand another thing, another thing that a woman understands on a man of God, even though it's, it's a message like that, kind of related to us women, that we understand that faith is a substance of things hoped for. Hoped for. So something you're hoping for. So how does this faith work? Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So understand what you hope for, you need something in that hope. You need faith. So there's many things we can hope for, but we need faith, hallelujah, to get this done. So we need to rely. I said earlier on that remember, when your heart, when you, when you sort out your heart, the things you hope for just gravitate towards you, hallelujah, because it gives, you can work on your faith. All the time you can work on your faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in the book of Genesis, we don't have to turn there. It's just a small verse. But we all know in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, Adam was in the garden. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for, I will make a help meet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every piece. Yes. And the Lord, um, Okay, going on to, to verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs. God took one of Adam's ribs and closed up the flesh uh, instead thereof. And the rib which was taken, and the rib which, which the Lord God had taken from the man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one. Hallelujah. So we must understand where we come from. We were taken out of a man, out of a very important part of his body, the ribs, which protects vital organs like the heart and the lungs. So just like that, it is something like that. The vital importance of you in a home is to look after that man. That's what this. If you can, if you can relate that to that, you can see your job is your 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 role is very important to look after the man, guard him, pray for him, and he doesn't have to be sick. He should never be sick because each time he thinks he's sick, you tell him you're not sick because he refuse to accept sickness. I tell pastor that sometimes he says, make an excuse and say that uh, maybe uh, you never can't go there because I'm sick. I say, not sick, I'll never make that excuse for you. Because I don't accept sickness, hallelujah. He is not sick. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. So is my children, they are not sick, hallelujah. I declare them healed. Uh, you can go as a mother into your child's room while the Lord, uh, Will, will take you in, in the spirit and you will go into your chosen room and prophesy and you will, God will guide you. That one, favor Lord will come towards you. Uh, no sickness. I prophesy they will get the right partners in their life. They will, they will be honorable children, respectful. You, you, I'm just giving you ideas but the Lord will guide you for each, your, each of your children. Have we done that? Have we done that? Do we go on their beds? Do we go by their shoes? Pray for them, these children, where they are. One day they have to leave the house. You cannot guard them 24-7. In fact, we cannot guard them now at school, can we? No. But you can pray for your children. No. 
It's not always that we're going to be there around. It's kind of hard when, when you see the grid the first day to crash, you, you heart sore. But you know, eventually you get more heart sore when they big. Because now they're leaving the house totally. But a mother that prays, the prayer goes with them. Hallelujah. Amen. I've learned that also because it becomes a bit tough when you realize now they're big. Now, now where do they go? Who's going to be there with you? But you just have to do your part in praying. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> yes, I was talking about Adam. So God gave him a suitable help, a hallelujah. And then he was in the garden. He was the first one in the garden. So just like that, brothers, brothers and sisters today, I'm asking where's our main to be? They were the first one. They must be the first in church. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm looking for them today. Praise Amen. the Lord. They are some men here today. Amen. Give yourselves a pat if you are today. Amen. They were the first ones in the garden. We weren't the first ones. But I'm wondering where they are sometimes. You know, what happened to them? Why are they so, where are they? Look for them, bring them, pray for them. Bring them back to church where they belong. Hallelujah. It may be, you may think garden, church, garden, church. Look, there's not going to be a garden anymore. The garden is here where we're going to reap. The garden is be prayerful at home. The garden is a man that can serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe a Mother's Day message, but it's for both of us. We both were in the garden. Hallelujah. And we both came out alive, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes, it got more difficult because of disobedience. But we can change that. We can walk an obedient life, honey. And your life will never be difficult. It, you will go through stuff, but you will go through it gracefully, hallelujah. Yes, I said a mother, some of the attributes of a godly woman, a prayerful mother, she covers her home with prayer, and she covers her family. She covers other people as well. Don't forget, when God lays somebody in your heart, leave what you're doing. It's not so important that you have to finish what you're doing. If, if it's not an important task, just pray for that person. Because God has laid it in your heart. Hallelujah. She's a nurturer. Sometimes you find yourself looking after someone that's uh, elderly, that's weak or ill. She serves her husband, and she... She knows that in a marriage sometimes, not just the husband, but the children, sometimes there are little bit things that can go wrong. We argue, we get grumpy with each other, but we can learn to forgive each other. It mustn't take you more than five minutes to say sorry. Hallelujah. Let love flow in your home. Flow in the anointing. Because when you flow in that anointing and you forgive, you'll be surprised a man is very, very different. He's actually just waiting for you to say, you know, I'm sorry for grumbling, I'm sorry for being so grumpy. And that's it, it ends the story. They don't want a pat on the back, just for sorry, hallelujah. Amen. The word says the two shall become one, hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? So when you are kind, kindness seeps into the other one, hallelujah. When you're generous, your partner is generous. When you're loving, the other one is loving. So you wonder how this works. Practice it yourself and see it works. If one is stingy, the whole house is stingy. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, that's how it's just going to be, seriously. You find your children, um, over, over, let's say the opposite, if you kind, you find your children come home to say, they gave their lunch to somebody else. It just flows in the family. Hallelujah. They learn it from us. Remember that life changes so quickly. Life is changing at a fast pace, at a really fast pace in the age and that we live in now. So we must remember to um, enjoy every day. Like I said, do not worry about tomorrow because there's sufficient trouble of its own for the day today. That's what the word of God says. So try not to worry. I was telling you now about learning now a new thing that if it gets so tough, now you feel, you know, your heart is thumping and maybe your blood pressure is, uh, your, your, when your blood pressure goes high with hypertension, it is gushing through the veins. So imagine at the speed that it's going and you can just hit a stroke. So I'm saying, learn, let's learn not to worry too much. I know they are from, why not phone the pastor? Because the pastor is never going to not want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not saying that you can't pray for yourself. I'm just saying if it's so hard, if it gets to that point, hallelujah, phone somebody. Tell somebody, but don't worry, because we serve a mighty God. And sometimes when you realize the next day, was I even worried for, for something really? 
that important. Each day, um, putting God first in everything, hallelujah. We need to put God first in everything. And only God can truly satisfy us, hallelujah. Because it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall follow us. So sometimes the things that we're seeking on our own, we're just seeking it on our own. We have to seek it with the kingdom in first, hallelujah. So how is that, you should, you know that you've heard many sermons on how should you seek the king. What is seeking the kingdom? That's a whole other sermon on its own. But you know that, it's simple things, hallelujah. It's living a faithful life, being prayerful, coming to church, doing what the word says. The word says, sow a seed like we heard today, and set yourself free from worry. Do it. Because Jesus said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. I think we just don't do small fundamental things and we and look, no one's going to force you to do anything. If you want to let go of something, do it. Just do it because God says, I am the one that rebukes the devourer for your name's sake. I'm the one that will release you of that sickness. I'm the one that will solve that problem on your job. I'll move people around for you. I'll take out people for you and make an empty room for you. I mean, you're sitting on a chair and you're wondering, huh, I landed on this chair. But you know, with your faithfulness, God is going to even expand your territory. I'm speaking to someone here today. Hallelujah. I know God has revealed it to me. Hallelujah. Amen. And you wonder, and you remember this day, Speak faithfully, hallelujah. Love after godly wisdom and kindness as a faithful completer of others. Pray bold prayers. Bold prayers is not always shouting a shouting prayer, but a bold prayer is when you come to the Lord and you know, you know even the prayer is answered before you even kneel down. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, and the Lord has heard your prayer and you can pay a prayer, a bold prayer when you say, I cast that sickness out in the name of Jesus. He should move. The child's fever should come off, off, out of him. Hallelujah. It happens to me sometimes. Like the other day, Joshua had a terrible headache. And I know with the child, a headache is it's not something to take for granted. I know from experience of a child that had a headache. And then I knew that I must lay my hand on my child. And I knew that that headache will go. Leave the child out of that. Don't stress. Ignore. Leave them to do what they want. In a few hours, I thank God that the headache was gone. Praise the Lord. We serve the mighty God. Children also go through stuff. You never know what. In his case, he said he's not worried about anything. But then I knew that the devil is a liar. And he came to the right place. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pray for all prayers. See others well, successful, and healed. Always with meekness. So the glory of God. So it's always the glory of God that has to be revealed in our and sisters. God will use you mightily, but remember, you step back, give God the glory every time. Give God, and God is going to give. God is going to use that thing in you, and you will see miracles happen because God, He is the one that is the healer, Hallelujah, not us. He will do mighty things when you allow him. You say, you know, uh, in these last days, God is pouring out his spirit more than ever before so that his glory must be revealed. You must know why, why, why this is being done. It's only for the glory of God. We need God to be, to be revealed in these last days. We need to make a boastful show of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We, want, we, want, we know the time is at hand. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit really does the work. Amen. So another thing is showing true beauty. Remember, body, our body deteriorates, we grow older. But remember that we can develop if we invest in the word, not in the world, in the word, hallelujah. That's where we get lasting beauty of is the woman that serves God. We just read it there in the Proverbs. Hallelujah. The lasting beauty, the inner beauty, that's what Jesus is talking about. It's not me, it's the fight with the author. That's what God says. There'll be a lasting beauty in you. Hallelujah. People will look for you. I'm talking about people that need uh, the Lord Jesus. I'm not talking about people looking for you for beauty now. Don't get confused. I'm talking about people looking for you for Jesus, for healing, for prayer, for, for wanting to know how, how, how you do this. You know? Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. We read that now. 
Hallelujah. Stay humble, being consistently aware of uh, pride and selfishness. Don't think less of yourselves, but think of yourselves less. Amen. That's very really important. You know, you don't have to think less of uh, uh, yourself, but just thinking, don't think less of yourself, meaning thinking low of yourself. That's what it means, low of self. But just think of yourself as put God first. Hallelujah. Has not my hand made all these things, and so they came into being, declares the Lord? These are the ones I look on with favor, those who are humble and content in spirit, and who tremble at my word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a mighty God. Serve the Lord. Set your mind on eternal things, and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Please Him. Hallelujah. That's in John 12, verse 25 to 26. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world shall keep it to live an eternal life. So you may think, how do I hate my life? Hating, uh, hating is, is it's about leaving some things of this world aside. Not everything is for the child of God. Hallelujah. You have to set things apart. You have to choose to say no to some things of this world. To live, a eternal, to live this eternal life is not just doing everything that the world does. Hallelujah. I always say I only dance for Jesus. Hallelujah. I won't dance for any. As a student nurse, I would have other girls going out to the clubs and stuff. I sit alone, but I knew I dance for Jesus. And that has carried me through a song. I've heard lately, um, I met another person. She said, you know, so and so died, so and so died. So, so many people would take anything loose. But I thank the Lord that he preserves us. Amen. It's not a good thing when you hear that. If anyone serves me, we must follow him. And there where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, my father will honor me. Will, will honor, yes, him. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, whatever you do, do it heartily as if unto God and not to man. So praise the Lord this morning that you came heartily to church. Hallelujah. We never complain this morning. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't complain. Don't quit. And don't expect anything. Just do what you have to do. Seek the kingdom first and all those things shall follow us. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be always waiting to see. Now what now do I get for this? What do I get for this? God is going to bring it to you. I also wonder sometimes, Lord, now what do I do uh, for this person? And God says, you just pray for him and you see what I'm going to do for him. Praise the Lord. God has something for you this morning. Hallelujah. You will be rewarded. Hallelujah. There is one final thing. I know it's not a long message, but I have to. I learned this myself. Don't hold on to the past. Write that down big bold letters. Don't hold on to the past. It can rob you badly, brothers and sisters. It can rob you of your, your youth. Even your whole body deteriorate. Your hair will fall off. You will just lose, I don't know what to say, but God will preserve you, hallelujah. Going, you know, you see yourself like me in late forties, catching 50, but the Lord protects you. He preserves us, hallelujah. I see myself flourishing and I see you flourishing. Hallelujah. You'll be a woman that will be an example, hallelujah, in this world. An open letter, hallelujah. Now, what it is to hold on to the past? Maybe you had past pain or past even a sickness that you blamed. I don't even know how to say this. Maybe you blamed God for it. Or maybe you blamed somebody for it that landed in your lap. Or maybe because your past hurt in a relationship. Or past anger at your husband. You've got to get over it sometimes. There's no one's perfect. And even if it was the worst thing, there will come a point in your life that you've got to say, if I don't let go of that today, just look how I'm deteriorating. <laughs> Imagine deteriorating because you're holding on to the past. You can't even get, get over. How many years have gone by? You're stuck on, on, on. You're stuck on the story of what your teacher said to you. Really? And today you're the CEO of the company, of a company. No, don't get stuck on it. I teach my children. No, it doesn't matter if a teacher reminded you. It's fine. Shake his hand. Oh no, oh, just say thank you, sir. Respectfully. Take, take it. Don't hold on to past hurt or past. Uh, let's just say you lost something. You lost a job. You lost. You even may have lost a person. 
you may have uh, failed at something and you think you're a failure because you know you never really conquer and then you compare yourself you all start together look where they are and get oh you know god has something else for you totally in the opposite direction a such a great breakthrough is coming your way hallelujah
let environmental things because you know why? Why lose your life because you just hated one person? One person that was made of flesh and blood. And worse still, you hated a child that was a small person. They little people, be loving. We can't just say that can happen where you know you're so angry with someone and maybe it's your last day and then you was hating a small child because they said something bad to you or they never treat you. Really? Princesses, let's not lose our, our life. Princesses, for these things. But let us walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For He is a mighty God this morning. Thank you, Jesus, oh God, that I could learn from this word this morning, Jesus. That I myself, Jesus, Sharon, standing in front of you. Thank you, Jesus, that you're teaching me this morning. I thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. I receive your word. And I thank God this morning. Can we stand to our feet? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Father, there's someone here that needs breakthrough, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You've seen them, Lord. You know their hearts, oh God. Their faithfulness to you. Breakthrough, come to them right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray for someone, Lord Jesus, oh God, that has been convicted this morning to let go of just something that was held on. I understand them, Jesus, oh God. It's not always easy to forgive somebody that hurt us, Jesus. But Lord, if we do it today, we just set ourselves free, Lord Jesus. Give us that ability to set someone free, to set the past free. Lord Jesus, we're holding on to something. We're going on. We're going on to our 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. We're still holding on. No, Lord Jesus, thank you for the ability that you're giving us this morning. Thank you for the sweet spirit of God that is changing us this morning. Hearts are being changed this morning. Take away the stony heart, Lord Jesus, and give us a heart of flesh. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see young people. Oh, you're looking for a job and the Lord is going to open a door for you this morning. Where there's no way, Jesus is going to make a way for you. Trust in this eternal God. He never fails. None of us say to the better of God. This God never fails. Hallelujah. You can, you, you can, I'm standing here today as a, as a witness and I'm telling you, God never fails. You can have the worst sickness with the worst diagnosis and multiple diagnoses. When people thought and they even said, Yo, I wonder if she's still alive. And you know, people even phoned you and they were even scared to find out if you're still around. But you're around, hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are around. And the best part is you're totally healed. Amen. Totally healed. They find no trace. They found no trace in me. I had, I used to drain brain from one lung to the other lung. Doctors uh, said I got sarcoidosis, interstitial lung disease, pneumonia. Hypoglobulinemia, what else you can ask, Pastor? This is not made up. I have none of those because I serve a living God. Hallelujah. None of those, God, here in the state this morning. Hallelujah. In fact, even on a chest x ray, they cannot find the, 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 you know, the, the points where the drain went through. Isn't that wonderful? I'm telling you, we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. We serve a great God. It's a testimony to praise Him. And that God uses me today. That when I pray for others, I see them healed. I see them healed before I pray for them, brothers and sisters. I see them healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for this beautiful Sunday, Lord. And as we go to our homes, Lord Jesus, oh God, I pray that you bless our Sunday, Father. I can go on, Jesus. But I'm not going to forget to say thank you, Jesus. To say thank you, Jesus, because you're such a wonderful God. Thank you, Jesus.
thank you so much. Amen. Praise God. Well, at this point, I, will, I won't keep you long. I would just like to call upon uh, Brother Rodney and Sister Michelle and Baby Rochelle as they come up to dedicate the baby. Come on, you can do better than that. for which you will be accountable unto him for, and that is to train up your child in the ways of the Lord, to teach your child, as Pastor Sharon was sharing earlier on, teaching your child the word of God. And I think that is a culture that has stepped into the church which is, which is not right in that parents look at it as the church's responsibility to teach their children the things of God. No, it is not just the church's responsibility. It is our responsibility as, as, as parents too. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I mean, many times you find a parent will just send the child off to Sunday school. They won't come to church. I mean, that's really not going to teach the child the things of God. You've got to be in it with your child. Amen. It's a commitment that you make. The second responsibility is to be an example to your children of Christian living, both inside and outside the home. I mean, a child mustn't look at you, you know, when you're public, you get home and think, is this the same person? I mean, you ought to behave as you behave in the home, is how you behave outside. As you behave in church, is how you behave at home. 
come on somebody children pick up those things and children learn from us children look at that so we are to be examples to our children of Christian living the third responsibility is to provide to provide for to protect and to nurture your children. That's the third responsibility. It's to provide for your child, to protect your child, to nurture your child. Amen. It's not somebody else's responsibility. This child has been given to you, your gift from God. Your responsibility to provide for this child to protect this child, to nurture this child. God will give you that ability, God will give you that grace, God will give you that strength to do all those things. And the fourth thing God requires is that you make your children a part of your family. You may find this is your first child. You'll be blessed with many more children. And it's our responsibility to make our children a part of the family. A child should never feel that you love the other children more than them. A child should never feel rejected or neglected in the family. A child should feel that they have a sense of belonging and place in the home. Yes, every child is not the same. Every child is unique. So you cannot compare and say, why can't you be like that child? Or compare your child to your brother's child, or your cousin's child, or your friend's child. Why can't you be like that? Understand, your child is unique. Celebrate the gift that God has given to you. Amen. And to share with your children your love, your time, and your life. That is the responsibility we have. And lastly, is to teach our children, teach your child, to love the same Jesus that you love. To love Him, to serve Him, to obey Him, and to honor Him. Just as you do. May I remind you this morning that you are not alone in this responsibility. God, your Heavenly Father, is always with you to provide you with strength, encouragement, love and all the wisdom that you need in bringing up this child. You find many times the parents will get to a place where they say, I don't know what to do now with this child. It is that point where you need to call out to God. It is that point where you need to ask God for the wisdom. God gives wisdom freely. If you ask Him, He'll give it to you. Dr. Paul will not give you that wisdom. Oprah Winfrey will not give you that wisdom. The world will not give you that wisdom. They can't tell you how to bring up your child. Your child is unique. And that, that is a problem we have. We listen to all these motivational speakers and we think that's how we bring our children up. No! If you read the Word of God, your child is different. Your child is unique. It is God, but God who created this child, the God who gave life to this child, the God who knit this child together in your womb. He is the one that will give you the wisdom to deal with this child. All the obstacles that will come along the way, God will empower you and enable you to bring this child forth. This child has a great destiny. Every child has a great destiny. It has a place in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So all you have to do from your part is to go to God. That's why we call him Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. He's a God who provides. As he's provided you with this child, he'll provide you with the wisdom you need, the grace you need, the encouragement you need, the strength you need. He'll provide you all that you need for this child. So as you go to Him, He'll provide you all that you need. And this morning, we are not just dedicating this child. We are dedicating the parents too. We are dedicating the parents too. Hallelujah. 
because by coming up here this morning, you as parents are publicly saying that you want to raise your child in a Christ-honoring home, a home that honors Christ. And you are asking for God's blessing on your ministry as Christian parents. Just think of that for a moment. You are a parent. That means you have a ministry. You minister to your children. Come on, somebody. You are a minister to your children. So I'm going to ask you some, some questions. And these are promises that you are going to make this morning. But I remind you that you are not making these promises to me. Nor are you making it to your child. Nor are you making it to anybody here. But you are making this promise to God. This is your promise. When you come up to dedicate your child, you are making a promise to God. And if you are willing to commit your child to God and to dedicate yourself to raising up your child in God's strength and for His honor and His glory, then I would ask you to reply and respond to the questions that I will ask you by saying, I do. Number one, do you recognize your child as a gift from God and give God thanks for blessing your life with His most precious gift? Do you then dedicate your child to the Lord who gave you your child? Do you pledge as Christian parents that you will bring up your child in a Christian home looking to God for wisdom, strength, and guidance. Hallelujah. Do you promise to give your child every possible benefit of home, school, and church? Do you promise to pray for your child on a regular basis? Realizing that it is only with God's hand upon your child's life that she can be truly blessed. Do you ask God's blessings upon the life of your child to guide, to guard, to direct her through all the years? If your heart was in these promises, then you have dedicated yourself to raising a child that God can use mightily in His kingdom. <laughs> Amen. Now, I have a letter that I will give to each of you on behalf of your child. And one day, someday, I would like you to open this gift and to share this with your child about what has happened here today. This is a gift to your child. For Pastor Sharon and myself, your child can read this one day and understand what took place here this day. Our prayer is that she too will one day make that glorious profession of faith, confess the Lord Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. yourself to this family, to the parents, and to this child, to pray for them, to encourage them in the things of God. The answer is up to you. Amen. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for 
your children, your gift given unto us. Can I ask the Father to hold the child? Thank you. Thank you, Father. She's so beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Can she stay together as a certificate already? The child in advance. Thank you, Jesus. Rochelle Marco Borrero Akatendega Kabutimbe. We dedicate you to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, as we dedicate this child, we commit it to you, to the word of your grace. We thank you, Lord, for the plans and the purposes that you have for this child. We pray for the parents too, O oh God, to give them strength and give them the grace, O oh Lord God, to raise this child up that she will one day be a mighty woman of God. That you do great exploits for the kingdom of God. We ask this in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As we dedicate it to you, Lord God, we know that in blessing you will bless and multiply and multiply them. We cover in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we thank you, Lord, no sickness, no disease, no virus, no plague, O Lord God, will rob this child of her blessed life. In the name of Jesus, may she be blessed, O oh Lord God, for all the days of her life. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, and the people of God say, Amen, Amen. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you baby Rochelle Kamutinde. Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each and every one of you. Both now and forevermore, the Lord bless you, keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God Almighty grant you great success and sweatless victories. In Jesus' wonderful name, God's people say, Amen. Amen.